The first poem I ever wrote, I was at top year junior school, uh, so I was what, 10, something like that, and the teacher said, uh, I want you to go home and write a poem about Christmas. I didn't really know what a poem was, I knew it was very short, so that appealed to me. And I went off and I wrote this poem and I was pretty pleased with it. And um, he'd said that I, he was going to put the best six poems up on the wall and he didn't choose my poem. I think I was a bit heartbroken. And then uh, about a week later he came up to me and he said, oh, I just thought I'd tell you, Simon, that poem of yours, it was really good. And I just thought, well, why didn't you put it on the wall then? And I actually I've wondered since then whether I've just been pursuing a career of revenge, you know, thinking every time I finish a poem, Stick that on your wall, mister. I think most of my poems start as little daydreams, really. An idea leads to another idea, leads to another idea. And really, before I know what I'm doing, I'm some way into the poem. And I sort of snap out of the daydream and think, actually, that's, that's the stuff that poems are made of. And it's at that point that I'll, I'll sit down and, and start writing it out as language. I've always been interested in poetry because it's, it's so powerful, you know, so few words, space on the page all around it, so there's an intensity there that, that I admire. And I like the idea that you can say a lot with, with just a little bit. I think I've always liked that idea of less is more. I think the expectation is always towards prose when you write. That's the way that you sort of write at, at school. It's what you're accustomed to when you pick up a newspaper or a magazine. But poetry is obstinate. It's not going to be that. It's, it's defiantly going to be something usually that doesn't get to the right-hand margin, that quite often doesn't get to the, to the bottom of the page. And so in that sense, it's, it's, it's the awkward squad. You know, and a lot of poets are signed up members of, of the awkward squad. My three tips uh, for writing poetry are very clear. Uh, read, read, and read. Yeah. You can't write unless you read. You, you don't know what you're doing. So you can't be a writer unless you're a reader. So if you don't like reading, forget it. All my inspiration and drive and desire to write poems comes from the work of other people. Um, I see other poems and I'm jealous of them and my poems are jealous of their poems and I want to write my own versions of their poems. I, I want to set my standards higher than their standards. Um, but if, if there were no such thing as other people's poetry then I wouldn't be writing. It's, it's the work of other people, other people's poetry uh, that excites me so much. I want, to, I want to try my own hand at it. You can't go in search of inspiration. It's not a naturally occurring substance. It's not like a, um, a pearl in an oyster or it's, it's not going to be found like a, a seam of, of gold in a, in a mine or in the hills. I think you can go look for ideas. You can set out and go walking or driving around and find ideas for a poem. But inspiration is really excitement. It's being excited about an idea. And you, you can't really make that happen. If it's not there, it's not there. Um, it, will, it will just occur to you that you're excited about an idea. And I think that's what inspiration is. And it drives you on to actually commit that idea to paper. I used to play a lot of cricket and um, I always felt that it was nothing more satisfying uh, than to take a catch uh, just when the ball lands right in your hand, that split second when your fingers close around the ball and the catch is completed. And it always made me think that it was a similar satisfaction to finishing a poem, closing out a poem, just closing your, your fingers around uh, the last full stop. So this, this poem tries to draw those two ideas together and tie it up with one little image. The catch. Forget the long, smouldering afternoon. It is this moment when the ball scoots off the edge of the bat, upwards, backwards, falling seemingly beyond him, yet he reaches and picks it out of its loop like an apple 
from a branch, the first of the season. <laughs>